Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce, and my hair is extra spicy this morning. That's... I literally just woke up, and I was like, oh, crap. I have to do reading comments and try to get that out by noon, because that's what I tried to do. So, anyway, without any further ado, today's beer, again, is coffee. So... Oh, and I am drinking the typical best dad ever mug that my kids got me, because they saw it, and my kids got it for me, so... I'm loved. You can go fuck yourself if you guys don't love me as much as my kids do. <laughs> Let's get into this. All right. Uh, we'll start back with the reading your comments number five. Lord of the Rings, Spider-Man, Ghost of Tsushima. I was so sad my Ghost of Tsushima video didn't get a lot of uh, a lot of attention. Oh, well. Um, all right. There we go. <clears throat> Um, and there are really only two comments on this video that, um, but, uh, dead end 4991. As of my comment, you have 577 subs. Congratulations, dude. Your channel is definitely going to get bigger and I'm glad to be here for the ride. As of right now, we are at 619 subs. So in seven days, you guys have increased the subscription, the subscriber count by over 50. That's insane. And it like it, it just goes through massive leaps here and there. So that's crazy. Thank you guys so much for your enthusiasm with the channel. Tim Allen. I wish it was the real Tim Allen, but it's fake Tim Allen. But Tim Allen says Ripperverse is uh, having supply chain issues and trying to ship them all close together as possibly um, as possible by uh, order in the way that people place their orders. Yeah, no, he's absolutely doing that, especially with all the supply chain stuff going on. Uh, Ripa even said that he, you know, he understands part of the, you know, the fandom is, you know, not getting left out and having stuff spoiled. And, and um, he thought it was really important to move his shipping dates in such a way that <clears throat> um, everybody could get their comics kind of close together. So, Mm. Oh, coffee. Oh. Oh, coffee is so good. <clears throat> All right. This one here is the why I'm fighting for our culture video. Uh, why we have to take back the culture. This was actually an excerpt from last week's uh, reading the comments. So I kind of got two for one out of that one. But I just, I really like what I said in this, <clears throat> in this video. And in that little monologue that I had uh, reading the comments and I just I was like you know what I'm gonna pull this out and I'm gonna I'm gonna put this up uh Fopeezy says shout out shout out to you Fopeezy I hope you're doing well <clears throat> um okay let me see oh shit okay so all right guy gad boys has a really long comment, so I'm going to forego his other comment because, again, them's the rules, right? If you do short comments, I'll read a bunch, but if you do really big comments, I'll read one from the video. All right, Guy Gadboys, uh, you have mentioned possibly doing a video on woke stuff as a new religion. The quote below uh, from one of the Rings of Power Runners seems at least quasi-religious. Um, so this is a quote from apparently rings of power creator. Uh, there is a real darkness right now. There's a lot of people who are in a lot of political darkness, economic darkness, social darkness, just a lot of challenges and middle earth speaks to people in their soul. The showrunner said rings of power creator, um, contemporizing J.R.R. Tolkien's novels, uh, the real darkness right now. Um, yeah, they're trying to twist what Tolkien said. Uh, people can love, hate, or mock religion, but it's a fact of the human condition that many people need and seek an understanding of the world through religion, and if they can't find religion, they will invent one. I absolutely, yeah, that's 100% true. That's that's 100% true. Uh, the Wokesters are apparently trying to make a new religion through cultural properties and Twitter posts and already have uh, a devil, straight white men, <clears throat> original sin called privilege now, uh, those with, uh, grace who can do no wrong women in various minority groups and so on. Yeah. It's really weird when you actually start to peel this back and break this down, how woke works as a religion in and of itself. It's, it's, it's really insane. Um, if race, if a, if a race swapped character acts the same as the original, isn't there an implication that the original is the standard to which the swapped race should aspire? And how is that not? Uh, 
a racial su <clears throat> superiority statement. What is their response to people who don't uh, want or see a need to have their race swapped in a role held by another race, and many, in fact, find it insulting? Wouldn't wouldn't a race prefer their own original character instead of a second uh, instead of secondhand clothes of a different race? Why is the uh, why is the swapped in race not worthy of an original character? Taking something away from people based on race suggests the entire race has done something wrong. In this case, uh, can they clarify of what crime all white people across the world are guilty? Um, there's a lot to unpack there, and I just woke up. So, okay, no, you know what? I, I'm going to keep reading this one. I, I, I'm going to give a short summary to this. This is really good, though, okay? Um... Unless it is some sort of gift giving, uh, uh, unless it is some sort of gift, giving people something based on their race implies their lack of something. When did they include the swapped in races? Uh, when when did they conclude? Sorry, the swapped in races were uh, deficient in some way. In this case, lesser than white people. When did they come to the conclusion that they are fit for uh, duty to judge entire races of people? Are they omniscient and morally perfect? Was there a global election of some sort? Did the majority of racial group ask Amazon Studios to rescue them, etc.? Uh, have they considered the potential damage to society of the notion that resources, uh, e.g. roles on TV shows, have been distributed uh, by race over other considerations, such as authenticity or merit? For example, would they consider it fair for their own, uh, for uh, their white people uh, employees to pay higher taxes based solely on the race and the face of the government penalties uh, if she didn't. Yeah, no, they, they would absolutely like for a certain race of people, but uh, based on the laws in America, we can't actually do that. So let's keep going. Uh, or would it be fair to lose employees' jobs because of racial demographic population shifts? How did they reach the conclusion that simply because people exist in a population, they are entitled to ownership of every part of that population's culture? A culture can consist of many subcultures produced by many subgroups and sharing uh, a social boundary with a subculture doesn't mean their culture belongs uh, with a subculture doesn't mean their culture belongs to me, right? Yeah, so for <clears throat> so to boil all this down, okay, um, the one thing you said, who gave them the power uh, to, to do all of these things? And I can summarize this easily. Um, unlike the three great religions, which is uh, Christianity, uh, Judaism, and uh, Islam, unlike those, and we call those the three great religions because those have been the three biggest on the planet for hundreds of years at this point, right? Uh, and I call this one the fourth great religion. Okay, this one, those three great religions, all of them have one thing in common, and that is that they have a higher being, a power that is higher than that of man, right, to be the guiding light to show them uh, where they need to go. Um, in this religion, they do have that guiding light, that God. The problem is, is they have brought it down to mankind, right? Okay, and... That's where all of this starts to fall apart. Well, who gave them the power? Well, keep in mind, they are the gods of their own existence, right? And that is very, very dangerous lines of thinking. Being the god of your own existence is uh, uh, completely corruptive to one's soul and mental fortitude. And uh, Guy Gadboys, I really appreciate that. And sorry to everybody out there who had to listen to my horrible reading of that. But... That's where they get this idea from and this power from is the fact that, I'm uh, sorry, I was sitting on my phone, is the fact that <clears throat> they have eliminated a higher power, a higher being, and thusly, when they look at being the gods of our own existence and being the ones who are solely important to the planet, nothing else, um, they remove the that ability to say, well, that's between you and God. Well, no, because now it's between you and them. Because again, they've lowered they, they've lowered the godhood down to them. When you were saying, well, are they omniscient? N no, obviously not. But they feel themselves to understand the morality of a world in such a way that they they can control it and they can uh, move it in the direction that they want to go. Um, that's, that's, that's the big thing here. You talked about some really great points about it being a religion. I liked that. Um, you know, 
they had you know that they have their devil straight white men the original sin called privilege now um and I would say that the original sin is actually changing from privilege to something else, but we'll get that's an entirely different subject. The only point that I think you missed here is how they changed the godhood status, right? Yeah, they can have their saints and their priests and all that, but never forget that when you move godhood from where it should be, which is God, and you bring it down to our level, uh, it's going to sway and move. That's why that's why when you perform your public confessions on Twitter after you've made some transgression against God, um, your penance, you know, your penance is never up, you know, and you must constantly be confessing to, to the new gods of this great fourth religion. It's, it's pretty interesting when you break it down, you start to see how religion is so ingrained in us evolutionarily and how most of us will function with it. You know, an individual can function, um, as an atheist, but a society can't. So, um, Thank you, Guy Gad Boys. That was a really good one. Uh, I really like that one. Uh, Jarno Brofle uh, Brofelt. As a father, I totally respect you. Well, thank you so much, man. I hey, cheers to you. I'm doing I'm doing dad coffee right now. But Jarno Brofelt, thank you so much. Uh, that means a lot. Seriously, yeah, dad respect right here. Okay, making sure the puppy is still at the top of the stairs. I don't need him messing about. And I say messing very intentionally. Kyle Phillips, which Kyle Phillips actually just joined our uh, Gilded, which you guys should really go check out the Gilded server. It's like Discord, but not communist. So you guys should really be a part of that because that's where I'm taking beer recommendations, comic book recommendations and all that. So yeah, go do that thing. Uh, I might actually just do a video on um how you guys can get in touch with me and that's going to be through the gilded um unless you want to have more of a, a private like business conversation then that'll actually be through my email uh but i that will be my the the email for the channel will be doled out on an individual basis just depending excuse me i apologize all right kyle phillips i'd encourage creative writing from an early age um, expressionism is the root of all culture. Yes, and I did, um, and I, I think that Kyle is onto something. I don't think that creative writing, particularly for all children, I think Kyle is a writer. He loves writing. He's actually, he created his own gilded where uh, people can go and kind of share their own stories and stuff like that from their writing. So um, Kyle Phillips is doing a great job over there. But um, so I have four kids, right? Um, and they're all very close in age. They're, they're very, very close in age, ranging from, uh, uh, 10 to, uh, six right now. And they're all very different. Um, you know, one of my kids engages with video games really, really well. And in fact, it was video games that got, you know, got that child to read. Um, you know, we had the Pokemon Sword and Shield and... They really wanted to play it. Yes, I'm using the pronoun games here. I'm sure you guys have heard me say stuff in the past, but I'm specifically referencing my kids, so I'm not. But they really wanted to play Pokemon Shield, and I said, well, you can only do this if you read, because if you've played any of the Pokemon games, you know there's no dialogue to carry them through the game. And sure enough, they were reading within like a week, like full-blown sentences it was ridiculous no i am not using the they them pronouns for uh you, oh well they have no i'm using they them pronouns because i'm specifically referencing one of my kids and i would like to leave obviously you can go online and probably figure out how many kids i have and their genders and stuff like that but but specifically talking about them i would like to not um give out too much information so that's why I'm using the uh, they, them pronouns for obscurity, not for uh, ideology. And that was very hard to do, actually. David Coleman, well said. For some people, there will be a uh, there will be a way to the books via this series, but boy, will they be in for a nasty surprise. The first Jackson trilogy will always be a better way in. I think you're right to head the stuff off at the past. It's not the best way to be introduced to Tolkien. No, it is not. I don't believe that this is the best way uh, to be introduced at all. So thank you so much, David Coleman, for commenting and being here. Giovanni Tumin Giovanni Tuminia, what an inspiring message. In a culture where family values the roles of husband 
and wife and the lives of unborn are all mocked and rejected this was a breath of fresh air thank you so much giovanni that that moves my heart it really does um when when people come in and they comment like that like people say so much nicer things to me than i think that i deserve um all right, Eric July in the Ripperverse, Santuan Theory, let's go. Comments. I don't even remember how many comments this one. Oh, yeah, it's got 38 comments. Okay. Um, right? Is that the next? Yes, that is the next video. God, I did a lot of videos this last week. Oh, my God, I'm retarded. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, <clears throat> holy crap. It just kept going. Okay, there we go. Billy Bobsack. Hey, just wanted to say, I think Santuan was on cover A with a Merc security shirt on. Yeah, I didn't even see that. And then I went and I looked it up. And yeah, it's Santuan is literally sitting there. And he's got like some gold teeth in. And sh like, because I, I think his teeth were like knocked out or something, dude. Looking, you know. Yeah. I totally missed that so g me going off the, the security guard pack on the side i think he with the where the handcuffs could be i think yeah i yep totally missed that i was right but i was also wrong because i totally missed the fact that santuan is on cover a uh elongated man forever i have a theory that he is a bodyguard of darren yeah well i mean if he works for a security company that would make sense maybe not a personal bodyguard but in some respect uh so thank you elongated man forever uh sunny kim uh, Avery and Sanjuan used to train at the same boxing gym. Avery was always better, but then they both received powers, and and, <clears throat> and Sanjuan thinks he can take Avery down now that he is bigger. Uh, Sunny Kim, you might be right on that. If I, if it's okay, I'd like to twist your words just a little bit or formulate off of yours. Maybe Sanjuan was better, and then when they got their powers, that gave uh, Avery the upper edge, and then. Uh, Santuan got kind of mad at that. I, I, I think that could be a possibility too, but your possibility could be there as well. Uh, Giovanni Tuminia, I pre-ordered cover C since I was too, since I was late to find out about it and A and B were already sold out. Yeah, man, that sucks. I got, I think my, my wife got on this so fast. Like I have my books coming because my wife she was going to surprise, and she's like, I can't surprise you. She's like, because I know how you are, and you'll, like, really want this thing, and you'll really want to talk about this thing. But she's like, but I can't make you think that you missed out on something for two months. So she told me. But, yeah, no, I only did, like, I was literally like, baby, I would really like to buy this. Like, hey, can we, can we buy, can we buy these books? Is that a thing? And she's like, I already bought you two of them. And I was like, wait, what? And she's like, yeah, I already bought you two. And I was like. It was the day that I recorded the Ripaverse videos. Um, so that Thursday. Uh, she bought them on the Wednesday, though. So he went live Monday. I was telling her about it. I was excited about it. Uh, Tuesday rolls by. She buys them on Wednesday. By Thursday, I am very inspired and highly motivated to be to, to do the Ripaverse video that most of you are probably here because of. And yeah. And so that's when I, that, that was the order of operations that week. Mitchell Alexander again. Uh, but he's not making big comments. So we'll read this one. Uh, Mitchell Alexander again. It is weird seeing this channel do the mainstream comic books channels and pop culture superheroes thing where they theorize and speculate on uh, the boys' future seasons and make theories about the MCU or whatever, except it's with the Ripperverse. Yeah. Um,. But I might have to get used to more channels doing this very same thing with Comic Skate's property and comics in a few years as it picks up more steam. Yeah, so, and that was my whole thing here, Mitchell Alexander. And I, I responded. I usually don't read my responses because uh, I'm not, I am not the star of the show here. You guys are. Uh, but I, I did say that I think if we want this stuff to take off and become more popular, that's what we should do as fans of the properties. Uh, it was Razor Fist who said in his culture video the week that um, uh, Eric July released. Why does my camera keep getting knocked off? You can see my light switch. Sorry. <sighs> People keep hitting my camera. Puppy, what are you doing? Anyway, um, but it, Razor Fist was saying, look, like if you're not a super creative person, um, and I am creative in my own right, not, uh, but that's a different story. But they're like, but, you know, these properties are going to need people covering the channels, covering the comic books, you know, doing the story, you know, readings and stuff like that. 
five buffers and um and so be that channel be those channels be those you know news uh the the newspapers that go newspapers uh news websites that cover this stuff like they need that if this wants to grow they need that they've got to get those voices out there and so that's that's my goal here that's what i'm doing that's that's and 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 razor fist was right you know I, I I feel like if I said that to him though, he would be like, yeah, "Fuck you!" I was right, and I'd be like, "Dude, I, I agree with you though." Um. All right, but thank you for that, Mitchell Alexander. Xander, <clears throat> sassy seventy seven. I just love to see all these fan theories. Uh, this fan base is so fired up. This reminds me of how excited I was for Star Wars Episode One. Uh, it premiered the same years. Uh, I premiered the same year as Star Wars and had older siblings. Oh. Oh, I premiered the same year Star Wars. So she was born in... When was the first Star Wars? Was that 77? Hold on, I gotta check on a puppy. Hey. No, I'm tired of dealing with you. Stay here. Yeah. I have to keep him in check. Yet. He's gonna be a big boy. I hope he is a big boy too. I don't want people coming into my house, which they shouldn't in this area. God, my hair is hair is spicy this morning. Spicy, spicy hair. Anyway, um, this uh, uh, I premiered the same year. Okay, so Sassy was born the same year the original Star Wars. Uh, as the the original Star Wars and had older siblings uh, toddling after them. I don't remember my first time seeing the original trilogy. Just. Warm memories of them spoiling the family relationship and playing uh, Star Wars with them. So episode one uh, was the one I was going to see in the theaters on my first viewing. There was a lot of marketing of the characters with stand-up and cutouts at grocery stores and gas stations. I remember that. I remember the hype for that. That was insane. The uh, internet wasn't in my house. Uh, so at the computer lab in college, I would go to a Star Wars website after finishing a paper. I didn't have access at college to message boards. I had all kinds of fan theories. Uh, I'm an, o I'm an OG trilogy girl, but I love the prequels too. Uh, I'm not a uh, Phantom Menace level excitement, but pretty damn close. But all these fan theory videos just remind me of the excitement that I felt in those months leading up to it. I'm happy for those of you uh, that this is launching your channels. And furthermore, Eric July enjoys that y'all are making them too. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Sassy. Uh, yeah, that, and no, and the hype around episode one was fucking insane. Um, that's, if you were old enough to remember that, or a Star Wars fan at that time, which I was, uh, yeah, that was, dude, mind-boggling like mind guy and actually the the hype train for all three of those were pretty good even though people thought the phantom menace was phantom menace biggest problem it just suffers from editing um all the stuff is there uh i think uh in explanation and dialogue in you know character dog can you stop it please <clears throat> sorry the puppy um, but I think everything is there, uh, in the Phantom Menace to make it a good movie. It just, it suffered from the editing. That, that is its biggest problem. Super Neil comments. I love that picture of Isom versus San Tuan. I didn't, yeah, I, I wasn't sure. I showed a few of them here. Uh, Super Neil comics again. Eric nailed it in the marketing department. Eric doesn't have a marketing department, Super Neil comics. We are his marketing department. And I'm not even getting paid for this shit. Maybe I should tell Eric July he should pay me for this shit. <laughs> oh god uh mr rainbow 228 hey good morning buddy hey would you take him upstairs and just keep eyes on him and watch him Mama. good job buddy thank you i appreciate it i appreciate it buddy uh sorry my uh my boy got up so i i know what i said earlier but yeah it's mr rainbow 228 I went and looked up his name, and the general uh, the general gist is that it means uh, the person can be ambitious, self-confident, self-determined, and have a strong, unyielding willpower. So Santuan's going to be a strong boy, and that's what I thought, just based off the artwork. 
And obviously his name, the general gist being that he's going to be strong boy, strong boy. Yeah, he's he's a strong boy. Elongated man forever. I have a theory that he could be someone Isom knew since he was young. Uh, maybe he was a rival or bully who made trouble for Isom and Derham and ended up as a bodyguard. Yeah, that could be a thing. I think, you know, because one of the things that we're going to run into here is um, it's going to be kind of like the Luke Cage um, storyline where you go back into your old neighborhood, you're going to run into people that you know, right? Like, if I went back to my old neighborhoods, like, I would run into people that I know, so... That's not even... <clears throat> like, that's a thing, and I think that that's actually... Absolutely. Uh, true. Uh, that was Elongated Man Forever. Tim Allen says, My take is that San Tuan back in the day was possibly a gang member that Avery and Derry had meetups with before the powers emerged. Avery protected Darren from the gang member, bully type, San Juan. Uh, the item you are calling a small pack is possibly an older style cell phone holder if the time period is around the 2010s uh, when flip phones were popular. Uh, I think that San Juan is the muscle for the new kingpin of the neighborhood. Uh, I agree that San Juan is the muscle for the new kingpin of the neighborhood. Uh, Tim Allen, I will respectfully disagree now that it was pointed out to me that uh, he had a pack... He had a pack on his side, uh, or he has that. He he is on cover A with his uh, Merc security shirt on. I still think it's handcuffs there. Uh, I don't think Rippa has said anything about altering the timeline. I think that we are just supposed to make the assumptions that, especially because um, you kind of see some cell phones and they look like they're just typical smartphones here. Um, I don't think he said anything about adjusting time, so we're just supposed to make the assumption that Isom is taking place in today's world. Um, all right. Uh, Matt Metawolf, and this one's a little bit longer, but I think the only comment's one. So, oh, Tim Allen, by the way, thank you so much. Uh, Matt Metawolf. <clears throat> that I think you might have... Uh, that, I think you might have hit the nail on the head on this one with him probably having a rivalry that stemmed back all the way in the early days with Avery and Darren. San Juan, I feel, was kind of a third wheel in the tantrum who pretty much eventually grew. In the tantrum, who pretty much eventually grew. They're not, like, probable at some point. Point Darren had met him and he was pretty much introduced into this whole body crime partnership and then Avery decided to walk away and become a superhero which probably made San really not like him and pretty much conform whatever negative aspects he thought about him and ever since he decided to become a crime fighter it probably really made an enemy out of both him and Avery because Avery dude Matt, Matt Metawolf, I appreciate all this, but man, you got to use some commas and some periods here. I'm I'm having trouble, uh, but I do like this comment. But <laughs> uh, and Avery, because Avery decided to turn over a new leaf, not only uh, betray Darren, but also I think that uh, their fights had gotten probably real bloody in the past. Um, to where I would say. San Juan has probably lost a couple of times, but also not without getting Avery in a very injured state in their uh, fight as well, because it seems like Avery, for the most part, everyone, uh, for the most part, everyone, fa he's faced, he has faced, okay, so I think you did like some voice to text here or something like that, and that's probably why it's going like this. Um, he's faced, uh, either is like a mid-level difficulty for him, but San Juan strikes me as the mi uh, high mid-level difficulty where he's pretty much uh can't fly is both big and probably has a has power face to do more damage output than his normal superhuman strength a power base i think is what you meant uh so i guess those power gloves probably give san Juan an extra boost and strength when he's punching people so i don't know about the gloves the gloves could just be an aesthetic um i don't know about any about boosting his power absolutely could be a thing um yeah, and there, yeah, I and and there's a lot there. I mean, I think that you know you're gonna run into some people that you know in your hood, and I I think that all of us are pretty much on on board with the the idea that you know they probably run around when they were kids. So, thank you so much, uh, Matt Metawolf. And that was a little rough to read, man. Uh, I don't know if you did that on voice to text, but um, put some per spaces and periods in there because it was it was tough for me to kind of get through that one. Um, 
trying to figure out where you were separating the you know the thoughts there but overall i think i i got it and that was really good thank you faux peasy it's amazing how close to the chest R ripa has kept everything i mean he's gotten a book in hand and he's never even flipped through it on camera uh when he shows the cards he's sure to hold it very uh, in a very careful way as to not expose anything on the back of it yeah that's very true and then i found out also my lovely wife went and bought the cards for me this week on top of buying me shadow binders from uh, Clownfish TV. So you guys are going to be getting a lot of content soon. I just have to wait for all this stuff to... And I like, like you know, I still have to pay my fucking bills too. So um, can't exactly do that. Oh my god, I'm 30 minutes. This is going to be a really long reading of comments. Super Neil Comics. San Antoine is happy to see Isom for all the wrong reasons. And I said, oh no. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right, Super Neil Comics. He is, uh, he's got a hate boner for, for Isom. Uh, never underestimate the power of hate boners, people. They're, they're, you know, hate boners can be really, really strong. <laughs> How many fucking videos did I do this week? Oh, my God. All right, Clownfish TV, Crimson Ren, Indiegogo, first impressions. Let's go, go. Oh, uh, that was gay. Um, <clears throat> to a Oregon boy. Uh... He says, 07. I said, question mark. He says, a drink with crazy. LOL, never seen an 07 salute before. I'm not a military dude. And I believe an 07 is pretty high up there, right? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. To a Oregon boy, you're confusing me. Um, William Barr. I'm old as shit, and I don't remember Treasure Planet. Was it 80s? No, it was... Uh, um, early 2000s, and it was completely squashed on by Disney. Um, they wanted that director to make something, and uh, he said, look, I really want to make this movie. It was fantastic. If you guys haven't seen Treasure Planet, seriously, you need to go see Treasure Planet. Buy it used on eBay. Do not give Disney your money for that shit. Uh, Corey Sanford, Clownfish is okay. Well, I mean, I think Clownfish is better than okay. I really like the husband and wife dynamic that they have there. Um... Clownfish TV. Thank you for the shout out. These kids are on a treasure hunt racing against Sky Pirates. You'll like it. Clownfish fucking TV commented on my channel. I just want to say that. That I was like, I was, I was at work when I saw that and I was like, what the fuck? That's awesome. Thank you so much, Clownfish TV. I doubt you're going to see this video, but thank you so much. Um, oh, man. Uh, Billy Bob Sacks. It, looked, it looks interesting. Uh, might pick it up. The art look, uh, looks really good. Uh, plus, I like Clownfish TV. Yeah, I'm going to uh, pick it up as well, I think. I think, no, I think my wife actually bought Crimson Wren, too. My wife bought me Shadow Binders this week, Crimson Wren. Uh, the Shadow Binders should be here soon, because she didn't buy it through the Indiegogo. She bought it through Clownfish TV's, like, website. So that's their overstock of it. So she bought me um, Shadow Binders, Crimson Wren, and the Ripperverse cards this week. Like, and I keep telling her, babe, like, you don't have to do all this stuff. Like, yeah, it would be nice to have this stuff to do content for the channel, but... My wife just tells me she supports me and she loves what I'm doing and she sees that I'm passionate about this and she sees the channel growth and what you guys are doing because every day I'm like, hey, babe, here more subscribers. Hey, babe, new comments. Hey, look at what these people are saying. So, yeah. Uh, thank you, Billy Bob Sack. That was great. Sorry, I gush over my wife because my wife is amazing and I hope that she, I hope that, I hope that she gushes over me the way that I gush over her, seriously. Massive Panda. When I first read through their original Shadowbinders comic, I also got Treasure Planet vibes. With the exception of the annoying robot character at the end. I'm sorry. I like the annoying robot character at the end, okay? Also, the annoying robot character at the end serves as a plot device in order to uh, get them where they need to go. I love the annoying robot character. I, I can't remember his name. But, no. He was really good shut up <laughs> uh treasure planet is a really awesome movie underrated but awesome yeah uh, hugely underrated that movie is 
massively underrated. They actually had uh, Johnny Resnick from the Goo Goo Dolls do the soundtrack for it. Oh my God. That was some of the best work Johnny Resnick's ever done. Um, as a, I, fuck, I was a longtime fan of the Goo Goo Dolls and like Matchbox 20 and Eve 6 and, oh, uh, was it Everclear? Or, yeah, Everclear. Um, all those bands back in the day. Uh, I still like a lot of their music too. Uh, the art in Crimson Ren graphic novel looks really good and polished. It does. I'm definitely going to be backing this when I get my next, uh, when the next paycheck hits. Love Clownfish TV's channel. My only criticism is they don't hype up their own stuff. Uh, I know they're super busy, but I'd really love to see them dedicate more videos to talking about their IPs. Uh, yeah, um, they kind of just introduce it in their videos. And they don't really, um, they introduce it in their videos and they don't really uh, do much more than that. They're just like, hey, welcome to our video. This is what we're talking about today. Oh, by the way, here's this thing that we're doing. Anyway, let's get into the topic. And it's just like, yeah, you guys could probably do a little bit more. Um, but that's why I'm here now. That's is this this is what my channel is gonna be. Um, you know, Razor Fist was right. These these guys need people like me. They need channels like this. That doesn't mean that I'm any more important than anybody else. But if we want this good storytelling to take off. There's a lot of political bias right now out there. People aren't going to be covering ISOM. People aren't going to be covering Clownfish TV. People aren't going to be covering um, The Long Moonlight by Razorfish, which I still have to buy, um, which I haven't bought yet. You know, they're not going to be covering these things. They're not going to be covering Gabe El Taib's, you know, Truth, Justice, American Way. They're not going to be doing that. And, uh, you know, there's other stuff here. Jason or, or John, uh, 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 John De uh, Erras. Um, sorry, can't roll my R's this morning. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what, that's what we have to do. We, we have to create, you can't just create the culture. We have to create a fan culture around this. Okay. This is a part of that. That's why this channel is doing what it's doing and why I'm covering all this stuff. We have to create the fan culture around the culture are that, that these guys are trying. These guys are trying to spearhead some stuff and we need to be, you know, we need to back them up as their shield and as anything that can help supplement them mocking tolkien the lord of the rings the rings of power this video has gone insane it's gonna take there are a lot of long comments in this video i don't know if i am going to be able to read all of them holy lord um michael darling cash grab true story uh thank you so much michael darling uh putting simon uh, I want to like the video, but then I would move the like count from 69 to 70. <laughs> Giggity. <laughs> Giggity. <laughs> That's so awesome. Uh, 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 Ju uh, Giuliano Bankov. I agree with every single word. Well, thank you so much, Giuliano. I appreciate that. And then Robert Mark's actually down here. He Usually I don't read into the threads, but he just... You know, I told him thank you so much, and Robert Marks responded with 100%. So thank you also so much, Robert Marks, for, for being here on the channel uh, and getting into that. Um, uh, Tech Toss. This one's a little bit longer. Uh, I can certainly relate to the anger, but it's not malice, it, um, and it's nothing new. It's just been done. Uh, it's just been done to something you hold dear now. Um, no, Star Wars. Star Wars was mine, Tech Toss. Um, but that's okay. That's okay. You don't, um, but the, I, I, no, no hard feelings there. I've been watching them destroy the things that I love for years. And, uh, but yeah, I, and I commented on this. I, I like Tolkien a lot, but not as much as many other people. If you were a student of Greek mythology and watched Kevin Sorbo or Arnold portray Hercules, you'd have felt this frustration much earlier. I was really young when Kevin Sorbo was Hercules. Um, and I remember <clears throat> that, that whole time and every you know even people are like yeah it's not hercules I'm like, i don't know it was a fun show um or if you're from uh from a northern uh country uh followed your roots and then discovered thor ragnarok uh take a warm dump all northern mythology on all northern mythology uh you could have had the same sensation um marketing slash movie people have spun gold or tried to out of each and every unprotected trademark they could think of 
You could construct theories for every one of those instances. Attacks on critical thinking, cultural identity, or religion. Then you watch uh, interviews with the filmmakers and you realize it's really just ignorance. Humorous and stupidity. I'm sure they feel like they made Tolkien proud over at Amazon. I personally don't care about that. The millions that applaud it are what really annoys me. Absolutely. And I, I thought about this and I think that it's the cultural gluttony that we have of just, you know, consume next product. Um, I really think that that, that cultural, that, that there is getting, is getting to, oh, the puppies make a noise now. So yeah, the cultural gluttony here are, uh, for just consume next product is getting really bad. All right. Man, my coffee's getting cold. I've been doing this so long. Warren Perkins. I haven't read the books, but I've played the MMORPGs in this type of fantasy, and the rings of power is all wrong. There's no black elf, no black dwarf, and no black halflings. Yes, that is true, Warren Perkins. Warren Perkins also looks like a black man. And so I think that he's coming at it from, from that side of it, which is really interesting. Uh, also, there were no hobbits or harfoots, because they don't have the legal rights for hobbits. Uh, in this age at all. There were no wizards either. And if they make Gandalf look like a young wizard, that's bullshit because they should know that Gandalf is essentially an archangel. Like, if we had to equate him to anything, like, Gandalf is an archangel. Um, and if you go into the movies knowing that, knowing how powerful he is, um, yeah. Um, uh, Dominic Cook. Oh, by the way, Warren Perkins, thank you so much. And Tech Toss, I don't think I said thank you to you, but thank you so much. Dominic Cook, spoiler alert, Tolkien wins. I think so. I think, I think so, Dominic. So thank you so much for your comment. Um, uh, Tygo, uh, Tygo or Tago? I'm going to go with Tygo because it's I before A. Uh, Tygo Santos, they put hobbits in their story, right? Why not wait until Hobbit Day? Why launch the series on the day of Tolkien's death? Only if they mean something by it. Uh, this is all so sad. Yes, it really is. This is really, really yeah. Uh, Convoy Bebop, the master mod of the Twitch channel. Um, and one of the guys, uh, one of the official three members of A Drink for Crazy. A random fun fact, imitation crab is usually made from scallops. Yeah, I because I, I called this thing imitation crab, and Convoy Bebop knows all about seafood because, you know, he's uh, from Florida, and Florida people just know things. Dominic Cook again. Uh, word from Tolkien... Uh, word from Tolkien from Mythiopia. And this was really cool. So I, this is a longer one, and I know he, uh, Dominic Cook commented, but I'm reading this anyway. And it's not, and it's, yeah. Blessed are the legend makers with a rhyme of things not found within record time, recorded time. It is not they that have forgot the night or bid us flee to organize delight and load a style of economic bliss for swearing souls to gain a sick kiss. And counterfeit at that, machine produced uh, bogus seductions of the twice seduced. Such isles they saw far, and ones more fair, and those that hear them yet may yet beware. They have seen death and ultimate defeat, and yet they would not despair retreat. And yet they would not in despair retreat. But off to victory they have turned the lyre and, kind and kindled hearts with legendary fire, illuminating now and dark hath been with light of suns as yet by no man seen. Yes. Um, essentially what they're saying there is that even though with the world changing ever as it is, um, the creative types will be out there creating new worlds for people to go to. Um, very fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that, Dominic Cook. Some tired person. I I feel attacked. I feel attacked. At 7.59, it's the latter. If it was naivety, um, they wouldn't have done every, uh, they would have done everything they could to course correct, but they didn't. Instead, it was quadrupled down on their actions and yes they do understand what they are doing the goal isn't to replace or rebuild but to destroy and shackle their enemies and to find out who their enemy is uh just look back 10 uh 
yeah, just look back um, <clears throat> 10, 20 years, all the cultural and historical items, values that were touched and altered. Yes, and, and yes, and I am aware of a lot of them. Not all of them, because some of them I just didn't, like, I didn't know who Doctor Who was until Gary from Nerdrotic started talking about, like, Doctor Who. So, um, and there's, like, there's... <sighs> Problem is, so when I was a kid, I, I bought a lot of stuff. Like, when I was in high school, I was buying DVDs, movies, and stuff like that. Because uh, Blu-ray wasn't quite up to snuff yet, and it was really expensive still. But I was buying stuff every week, right? Every paycheck, I was going out and getting new movies and stuff to watch. And things that I just found interesting. I was an action guy, so, you know, the, you know, Born, I, the Born uh, series, the original Born series, which was really good. Uh, so on and so forth. Um, a lot of properties I missed out on because... I hit the ground running at 20 years old. My wife and I had our first baby, and I just didn't have a metric fuck ton of time to look into a lot of stuff. And now, you know, kids are a little older, and I can devote a little bit more time to it. So yeah, um, but yeah, they've altered a lot of they've altered a lot of of stuff. So thank you so much, some tired person. I still feel attacked from that, Mr. C. As a longtime Tolkien fan who loved what Peter Jackson did with the Lord of the Rings trilogy, uh, this thing, ROP, Rings of Power, looks like garbage. Uh, the actors are uninteresting and all wrong for their roles. A giant waste of time and money. Hopefully, when this thing is rejected by the viewers, Amazon will learn a long, hard lesson to not trifle with or disrespect their viewers. I... A lot of people are saying that Amazon, regardless, is not going to let this fail. I don't know how they're going to stand up to the scrutiny. I don't know how you can not let this fail. That would be... Because I understand the media is going to spin it, but... Uh, I think the backlash to this is going to be really, really strong. Also, I think it's hilarious that Amazon made a billion dollar mistake. It's great. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh shit! I'm. This is gonna be a very hard last name. Uh, David Komakswitzki. Okay, I think I said that right. David Komakswitzki, uh, Polish, possibly. You dirty fucking Polak. Anyway, uh, two of the trailers in included the phrase y "You've been told lies about Middle Earth." Uh, who's told us the tales of Middle Earth we've all heard before? J.R.R. Tolkien. They're calling the creator of this classic a liar about his own creation. Ah, uh, very true. I wonder about the business case for this whole affair. How exactly did Amazon expect to recoup $250 million? They said they uh, they are said to have spent on the rights. The $200 million they are purported to have spent to get the first season launched. <laughs> and the reported $500 million they plan on spending over the next few years. By way of additional Amazon Prime subscriptions? Uh, or, okay, by way of additional Amazon Prime? Prime subscriptions, that's a question, uh, and I'm terrible at reading, I apologize. The service that um, most people pay, uh, that most people buy for free shipping with things like books and music and videos, uh, and, uh, and videos, nothing but an added benefit. Yes, yes, it's, it is an added benefit. Uh, because, uh, because of just another uh, streaming TV, sh because uh, because of just another streaming TV show. Sorry, the I'm I'm struggling. All these are all question marks, okay? And so I'm and I'm struggling this morning because I'm tired. Um, were they planning on releasing exclusive merch? I haven't seen any hint of action figures or games or pretty much any tie-in. Uh, that's a big misstep. If they're not doing action figures or anything like that, that's bad. Um, even if it uh, was a massive, a massive success, how would it work financially? And it won't be a massive su success. Yeah, they're spending a lot of money on this thing, and I'm, yeah. So thank you so much, uh, David Kumak, uh, Ah, I can't. I'm getting tongue tied. Thank you so much, David. I think I said it right the first time. David Coleman. Uh, it's malice. There's de uh, there's the de deliberation here. Uh, that this has been done on purpose to Tolkien's life work saddens me beyond measure, but I can't, but I take comfort in many things. One is that uh, the love I have uh, for Tolkien's work has lasted over 50 years and shows no signs of abating quite the opposite. Another comfort, uh, uh, another comfort is ale. So I'm happy to recommend this evening's uh, weapon of choice uh, back here in Blighty, a Belgian... 
uh, ch uh, Chime, a Belgian Chime triple brewed by those uh, canny tap uh, Trappist monks from across the English Channel. I think I have actually had uh, a beer from there. And um, yeah, so um, that is the uh, Belgian Chime triple and it's a triple so that's gonna be really fucking hoppy i bet uh by uh canny trappist monks oh also um again if you guys want to send me beer recommendations i will do my best here please go to my gilded i literally have a space just for beer recommendations and you guys can just make a list for me so you know, I can look into these new beers. But yeah, so that's where I'm going to be going for comic recommendations and beer recommendations. Please go there. Please go there. Because it's going to make it a lot easier than finding it in the comments. David Coleman also, thank you for that. Robert Marks says, Well said, good sir, and a tip of the hat to you. Thank you so much, sir. Everything woke that has come before it uh, follows the same step, <clears throat> the same step if faced with criticism uh, shout it out, uh, shout it out with racist, bigot, and sexism. Yes. Uh, this is not Tolkien. This was, uh, written during lockdown and government control, and they looked at things with the biggest fan bases and then stood up on the shoulders of giants trying to reach higher, but attacked the fans of the giants because they wanted, um, the name and fan and fans, but not the morals we loved about the giant and his works. Yeah, absolutely, Robert Marks, and I actually, uh, said here that, you know, kneecapping the giants that you're trying to stand on the shoulders of is probably not a good idea and that's exactly what they're doing that's what all these guys do they they stand on the shoulders of giants and then they cock their nines and then they put a couple into the knees of the giants and they go well why aren't you working why 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 aren't you standing up i want to be taller <laughs> guys you can't kneecap the giants that, that that's not how this works so no that was a fantastic tolkien discussion everybody thank you for that all right eric july is signing the rip reverse books that is the next video we're reading the comments from. Um, Meek. At least you aren't just watching She-Hulk for views. I do believe in the culture war, but man, it's becoming grating lately. I see why some people just are... Uh, uh, I, I see why some people just giving it a rest. Being negative all the time takes its toll. Yes, it does. I, I can't do the She-Hulk thing. I understand there's a lot of creators out there who have built their channels on this stuff. I never felt like it was my time to build a channel until now when there are good things to talk about and positivity. And I never made that connection and that correlation until um, until Lucas Garrett had commented to me um, uh, a while back. But yeah, so, um, but no, it's, uh, I, I, I don't want to do the negative stuff. We're entering an age where all of these fantastic creators are coming out with their stuff and it's time to start talking about them uh, for far too long people haven't and that's that's what i'm here for billy bob sack i'm just joking about the she hulk reviews uh, i just think it's funny to badger you about it badger away billy bob sack badger away um not morel name i see what you did there uh, good call. I don't understand a lot. Uh, a good call. I don't understand a lot of the outrage about She-Hulk. Rewriting uh, origin stories isn't new. She wasn't. Uh, she wasn't an existing character in the MCU. C is cinematic. Uh, the co uh, the comics in the MCU are different things. Hulk was already ruined um, when I stopped watching in Phase Three. Uh, it's not a primary release. Uh, CPT Marvel broke the MCU. Yeah, Captain Marvel. Uh, <clears throat> she was a main character in a primary movie and her introduction changed all the characters. She-Hulk is a dumb, low-effort side story. Uh, the damage to the character was already done. The show deserves to be mocked, but what's happening is equivalent of MSN going full crackhead with 24-hour news cycle. Uh, P.S. Bring back Edward Norton. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people doing the She-Hulk stuff, even channels, I just don't watch them. I'm not, I'm checked out on that. I don't want to hear about She-Hulk because I, I don't care. Um, let's talk about something positive. Like I said, that doesn't mean that I won't talk about some negative shit here on the channel. If something happens that pisses me off or something that I 
you know, I, I hear about something. That's why I've done the Lord of the Rings videos, right? Which seem to be doing very well for the channel. But I don't just want to be like, ah, Amazon hates the fans! Because there's a lot of people out there saying Amazon hates the fans. And there are a lot of channels that I love to watch and I love to listen to and I love to, uh, uh, in, you know, see what their opinions are who are doing the Amazon hates the fans videos. That's just not my approach. Um... Also, P.S., bring back Edward Norton. Yeah, Edward Norton. That movie is so under-fucking-rated. People are like, well, it wasn't really that good. Go fuck yourself. That movie was awesome. Was it really? Shut up. <laughs> uh, 2A Oregon Boy. Like where you're going, brother. Keep it up. Well, thank you so much, 2A Oregon Boy. I appreciate it. Meek. Back again. Wait, Meek, did you have a different... Oh, okay, no. Meek. Uh, at least you aren't just watching She-Hulk. Wait. How did that comment happen twice? Okay, Meek, I'm not reading that comment again because that's the same comment. You posted it twice, you sneaky little bastard. Um, Fopeasy, you asked for, for you asked for suggestions for things to look at. I did before I had my gilded, Fopeasy. Please go to my gilded. It is in the link in the description. Make a gilded. Become a part of the server. Um, you'll put in an application. I kind of have that as a check. So if you make your names somewhat similar to your YouTube names, you're good. As of right now, I think everybody I'll just kind of accept. Uh, I do have Convoy Bebop in there. He is going to help me moderate. So I do have some rules um, that we have to follow, obviously, for one, for legal reasons, and two, for I just don't want that to turn into anything different. Um, online forums tend to turn into just like people wanting to share porn all the time. And so my rules are basically like, no, you're here to talk about the shit that we're talking about on the channel, uh, have barroom discussions and stuff like that. And that's it. So, um, for peasy, you asked for suggestions. A few things that you could get your hands on right now are cyber frog, blood, honey, cyber frog, uh, uh, diary of Heather Swain, uh, she return of the warrior and she, uh, Haikyo. Uh, I have read uh, Blood Honey, which I think was okay, but I'm a fan of EVS, and the artwork is tremendous. I have both she books on order. I just haven't gotten them yet. Thank you so much, Fopeasy. Giovanni Tuminia. I got into an ugly fight on Facebook over the she over the she Hulk. Every time I say to my uh, every time I say to myself to stay out of it, somebody says something dumb online, and I can't help but chime in. Eric July was right. You can't reason or have normal debate with these weirdos. Yeah, I stopped doing the Facebook brawling thing a long time ago. Um, I uh, I love I love brawling. I used to love brawling on Facebook, but I would get like in religious debates with people. Man, there was this one time some pastor was sitting there trying to tell me. This is back when I was before I kind of stepped away from my faith, and now I'm stepping back into my faith. But anyway, at the height of of what I would call my faith, this pastor was sitting there arguing with me about how um, how you had to be as a Christian, this, that, and the other thing. And I started, and he started coming at me, and I was like, all right. And I took him to task so much, the pastor was like, well, I don't know about this, so I have to... Uh, uh, and he added somebody else into the conversation. I'm like, dude, you're a fucking pastor? And you can't stand up? And I literally just reached a level of biblical scripture that you don't know about? Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Sounds like you're you're leading your lambs to the slaughter when people do that stuff. So, uh, but the, dude, I used to brawl on Facebook all the time. Oh, I, I I'll dude, I'll brawl with people who politically agree with me. I don't give a shit. Let's go. I, I will brawl with you right now. You want to you want to go? If you politically agree with me, but you say some dumb stuff, let's go. I don't care. I'm that's and I I'll, I'll turn my brain on. Let's go. I don't really do that much anymore because it takes a lot of energy and a lot of time. But yeah. It's fun. I love Facebook brawls. Facebook brawls are great. Uh, Iron Raiden. Quite enjoyed your takes here. Uh, that one gif that was uh, tweeted with the kid writing wildly was actually myself. Yeah, so he was over there tweeting for, on Eric July. Uh, glad you got a laugh out of it. I've made a few videos discussing Ripiverse. Just uploaded one today, as a matter of fact. Wanted to give you a shout out on that video because I dig your approach and I wanted to... Uh, and I wanted to show a little support. Keep it up, man. So everybody, that is Iron Raiden. Uh, Iron Raiden on YouTube. 
uh, smaller channel, about 100 subscribers. He gave me a shout out in one of his Ripperverse videos. I wish the puppy would shut up. Uh, Iron Raiden. And if you guys want to know how to find his channel, go to uh, the Ripperverse books signed, the Eric July is signing Ripperverse books, and click on the comments and find Iron Raiden. And all of you guys out there, go give Iron Raiden. Uh, um, uh, hit that sub button over there for him, man. Just go, go check him out and see if you like his approach. So, Tim Allen, and thank you so much, Iron Raiden, by the way. And that shout out, seriously, like I listened to the whole video and I was, just, and I, when I was, I was working on editing at the time, and then I heard you mention my channel, and my heart just went, Phew. and I was like, whoa, that was that was such a surreal feeling to hear somebody else talk about me and their YouTube channel. That. I can't tell you. Literally, the level of appreciation I have for all of you guys out there is it's it's next level. Like, you guys, I care about my family. I care about my friends. And after that, I used to have, like, a couple other... No, you guys are there. You guys are right under fa friends and family for me. And a lot of you guys, with as much interaction as we're getting, I would imagine we're probably going to be friends. So a lot of you guys are, like, moving from the you know just being commenters and subscribers and moving into this place where i get to know you guys like this is this is insane so the yeah this is insane and hope and you guys better keep me in check too you guys never let my ego get too fucking big okay i want to be i want to be as humble as i can but i can't do that unless you guys tell me hey knock your shit off and you fucking slap me in the head once in a while all right, Tim Allen, go enjoy older comics. Would love to listen to your take on the back issues. Uh, for someone that's really hasn't read them, uh, most of my collection is from the '80s of both Marvel and DC, with some uh, uh, with some of the image titles. There you go. Yeah, because I was talking about the direction of the channel that I wanted to go in and how I want to cover stuff, and I showed off uh, this little thing here. Um, People are like, wait a minute, I saw you said you didn't read comic books. I was like, I haven't. Like, literally, that was in a box that my father-in-law gave us. Um, uh, and I haven't read any of them yet. Because I just haven't been compelled to. Um, but I'm kind of like waiting. I'm kind of like, I'm either going to pop my comic book cherry on <laughs> Shadow Binders or on uh, uh, Isom number one, whichever one I get first. So... All right. Um, this is Clownfish TV doubles their goal in just days. Yes. Uh, Mitchell Alexander back again with more recommendations. And I didn't, I think this might have been where I announced my Gilded. I have a Gilded now. Please go to the Gilded. Please go to the comic book recommendation section, the channel on that server, and recommend there. And just make a list. Nothing, I don't, like... There's the tap room discussions. We can have discussions there. The beer, uh, the beer recommendations and the comic rec. I want to say beer reviews. I was like, no, you know, it's a different R word here. <laughs> I'm a beer retard. But uh, the, so the beer recommendations channel and the uh, comic recommendations channel. I just all I want is you know uh, name of company that makes the beer and then the the beer itself or. Uh, name of person who made the comic and then the comic and just make a list like that that way it's short and concise so if I want to or other people want to they can go and they can scroll and it's nice and it's easy it's not these long explanations um, about what's going on um, for the beer stuff I might I might have to I might let people do like a little bit of a description. I don't know. I really got to figure that one out. I really have to figure out how to follow that format on that because I don't want that to just be a discussion panel. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, Mitchell Alexander, Jawbreakers, Isom, Blade Devil, Raging Golden Eagles Project, uh, Thomas Valiant, uh, Common America. I've heard of Common America. Shadow Binders. I have that one on the way. I have Isom on the way. And Cyberfrog. Cyberfrog is fucking everywhere, man. People are going nuts for Cyberfrog. I'm starting to think I gotta check it out. Uh, are there any big ones I'm missing? Meek simply says, nice work. Also, Mitchell Alexander, thank you so much. Meek, also thank you so much. Lady Alder can confirm Gilded is dope. See? Lady Alder knows it's dope, although I don't think she's joined my Gilded yet. But you guys should seriously join the Gilded. Seriously, I know you're like, oh, but it's another thing. Like, guys, but that's where you can directly talk to me. You can give me your recommendations in a nice, organized list that I will actually remember. 
right? Instead of having to come over here to YouTube and then go, oh, what video was that that they commented on? And then I literally have to just read all of the, yeah, even though it's not a lot of comics, but this channel's growing really fast. So eventually it's gonna get to a point where things are gonna get lost in the comments. I don't want things to get lost in the comments. Please, 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 please go to the Gilded. Please go to the Gilded. Like it's free, it's literally free. I'm not charging anybody for it because why would I charge? Like, I don't know, I, this ain't a business yet. This is a hobby right now. Uh, maybe it'll be a business one day, that'd be cool. But yeah, Lady Alder can confirm, Gilded, Gilded is dope. Gilded is dope, get your asses over there. Billy Bobsack, uh, John Del Eros has a comic that came out uh, right now called Overmind, yes. And I have actually that pulled up um, in my window here, so I don't forget. Uh, Billy Bobsack, go to Gilded. Go to Gilded, Billy Bobsack. I gave you the code. Go. Gilded. Link in description. I will probably pin a... I, Gilded. Go. Just go do that thing. All right. Charlotte Marsh. Too late. They destroyed themselves way back. Who destroyed themselves way back? Charlotte Marsh, are you being cheeky? Are you telling me something about the Shadow Binders and the Crimson Wren stuff? I don't know. But thank you, Charlotte Marsh, for being here. Uh, Chen Lee, I wonder if they'll put their next campaign on their website instead of using a crowdfunding site. Yeah, I'm not sure why they did it that way. I, I, it does take a long uh, while to build up the infrastructure to do the transparency stuff like what Young Ripa did. Um, so, and the way that they use this is that they already have everything in place for this book um, because they used their last uh, crowdfund to fund this book, right? So they put the money up front to get everything in place for the current book. And then the crowdfund that, that goes along with that current book pays for the next book. So, um, which is, a, I think that's a great business model. I think Clownfish TV has put a lot of thought into this. Yeah, but as far as having a website specifically designed to be as transparent as a crowdfund, um, that, that's a lot of infrastructure there and a lot of time and web development and all that, whereas Indiegogo already has it, so a massive influx of people, Indiegogo can take that massive influx of people a lot better than, say, the Ripperverse can right now. Right now. Uh, maybe the Ripperverse, and I think, I hope Eric July, like, does a platform for people to do this and just be like, here's your stuff, bam, it's easy, go. Right? That'd be great if Eric July would, you know, let people use his infrastructure. Um, Fopeasy, exciting times indeed. Just hype for comics again. Thank you so much, Fopeasy. And I think I did forget to say thank you to Chen Li for commenting as well. So thank you so much. And last, but most certainly not least, Lucas Garrett, the man who has been here for quite a while. Just like Eric, rip a July. Neon and geeky sparkles of Clownfish TV are exceeding expectations. I'm a happy man right now. Thanks for making this video, Royce. Absolutely, Lucas Garrett. And thank you for having me, um, challenging me and having me refocus. Because you were right, doing positive content on the channel, uh, more than the negative content on the channel is, is necessary. And I will be, again, when there are things out there that bother me, I will do them, I will talk about them. But overall, I will try to lean more positive on the channel. I might have like one negative video a week maybe but I'm releasing five to six, sometimes seven videos a week. So, you know, I think that'll strike a good balance. It's what I tell my kids, you know, negativity and anger. There is a time and a place for that, but it's not every day and it's not all the time. But you need to be able to be negative and angry when the time calls for it. That's what men have to do. You know, there, I can, I'll the first person to tell you there is an absolute rage inside of me, 100%. But I don't let it out. But if somebody ever came into my house to harm my wife or my kids... I would, because that's the time and the place for it. Anger is not a bad thing. Sadness and mourning is not a bad thing. Only when done in overabundance can all those things be very bad. So thank you all so much for watching this video. Uh, thank you all so much for checking out the channel. Go to my Gilded server. Seriously, do that. I need you guys to go to the Gilded server. Because that's where it's going to be easy for me to see the recommendations. Just go do it. Server, link in description. Please? Anyway, I'm gonna get to uh, 
I'm going to get to it. And uh, for those here who are in the premiere chat, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I love doing these premiere videos. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see these as a live stream. I might start live streaming these, but I feel that my conflict would be because I'm reading the comments from all the videos from the past week, and then there is a chat. So my question is, is that if I did a live stream, I would go through and read all the comments from the week, and then I would at that point start talking with the chat i mean we're talking this is this would turn into like a one to two hour long live stream on sundays let me know or well no this i mean we're already at an hour every week so this would be longer than that so let me know if that's something you guys would like to see um i'll put that out i'll put that question out in a poll um on uh on youtube Go to my gilded server, please, for the love of all the holy. go to my gilded server. Because that's where I'm, again, your beer recommendations will be in a short list there. This list style, just bullet points. One, this beer by this company. Two, this beer by this company. You know, the comic recommendations. You know, one, this comic by this artist. Two, this comic by this artist. Just short list style. No discussion in those two channels. You go to Taproom Discussions for that. So, all right. I will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for being here on A Drink With Crazy. And I will see you next time. Cheers, everybody. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.